Let's take a look at this assisted opening knife made by Schrade. This is the SCHA3CB. SCHA3 is the general model code and CB is the designation for this particular version. Uh, there is also a variant which is uh, gray, you know, with shades of gray and no black coating on the blade. As you just saw, assisted opening, very quick. You have, you can either open, in, open it using the thumb disc here or the flipper. Both very fast. And there is something peculiar about this flipper that I haven't seen before. Uh, usually the flipper is attached to the blade. So if you open it up, the flipper sticks out to the left. But on this one, it doesn't. It just disappears. And you can see it here. It just folds in like that. That's very interesting. It's the first time that I see this particular kind of flipper. Thumb disc here. It's pretty simple. It has a bit of uh, jimping going on there. You can actually remove it, which I will most likely do. It's just not necessary, really. I prefer to use the flipper, and um, I, I don't really see much of a reason for the thumb disc. Maybe someone prefers to use that for opening, but I don't, so... Until now, I didn't know much about Raid knives, and I've mostly associated them with the classic folders from their old-timer series. Uh, this obviously goes in the exact opposite direction. It's very futuristic looking, which was also why I wanted it. It's, I just think it looks awesome, quite frankly. I think it would look right at home in one of the Alien movies. Uh, kind of a high-tech finish look, and uh, with plenty of lines and, and corners. Just looks very interesting. The uh, safety also kind of adds to that look. So you can see it's a very interesting color finish. It's depending on how the light reflects, it's it either looks kind of bluish green or purple. It's extremely nice looking in my opinion. You know, someone might take a look at this and go like, Ugh, what the heck is this? Too fancy. But, you know, it definitely suits my personal taste. The um, blade looks a bit rough because I have used it, I tested it, and uh, I, I wanted to know how well it is made, so I was pretty rough on it. And, by the way, the rubbed-off finish here, that's a result of my idiocy. <laughs> Because after doing the testing, I actually uh, wanted to resharpen it using my Spyderco Sharp Maker. And I didn't notice that I had put it in the um, 30 degree slot. So I started grinding at 30 degrees angle, which rubs off the, the finish. And then I went like, oh crap. <laughs> the other side is still you know, factory grind. Well, it's still resharpened, but uh, you know, the finish is still intact. The uh, patterns there, that's quite a lot of text, really, which at first bothered me a bit. I don't really like to have that much text on, on a blade. But then again, it in a way, in an odd way, it kind of goes with, with the uh, futuristic look. You know, just some random data on there. It's kind of, yeah, does go together in a way. And what I really like about the blade here is it, it has a very intricate geometry. On a lot of knives you see something like this where they have a you know false edge grind or you know swedge or whatever you want to call it. But this here has quite a bit of extra lines, which doesn't serve any particular practical purpose, at least none that I'm aware of. Definitely pretty to look at. The blade is made of 4034 stainless steel, and like I said before, I'm not an expert on steel. I simply don't have the patience and interest to look into the technicalities, but I did look up the um, 
the steel and some people think that it's comparable to 420 HC and it seems like it's a relatively low carbon content for a stainless steel. Now, based on my you know, subjective impression of the edge retention from the test that I did, it seems okay. It's not amazing by any means. I wasn't impressed, but it's not bad either. You know, usable, but uh, it won't floor you. That kind of deal. Uh, I also tested the sharpness right out of the box. It cut the thin phone book paper pretty well. You know, it wasn't amazingly sharp, it wasn't hair shaving sharp, but uh, absolutely usable, so not an issue with that. At first I was a bit skeptical about the handle shape, because I kind of expected it to be unpleasant in the hand, because it has so many straight lines and, and corners and edges and everything, but it's not bad really. The overall shape is actually ergonomic, and it's primarily meant to be used with three fingers, uh, if you have smaller hands, like I do, you can grip it entirely like this. If you have a bit larger hands, you'll have to grip it like this. There are a couple of spots where I would expect, yeah, if you keep using it for prolonged periods of time, this may rub a little bit, like right here. This could be become a bit uncomfortable, but they actually did a good job of making sure that there are no sharp corners. You know, the, the, the lines are very crisp, but as you can see right there, all the uh, corners and edges are rounded off. There are, of course, more comfortable handles to hold, but this is not particularly abrasive, so I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, what I do have a bit of a problem with is the liner here. That is excessive, in my opinion and it's not very comfortable. Now, if you keep closing and opening it, this gets pretty rough on the thumb after a while, so that was totally overkill. Uh, it goes along very well with the overall look, but it's just too much. Personally, I don't even like any jimping or serration on uh, the liner whatsoever. I don't think it's necessary and it just doesn't feel good. But this is clearly over the top, absolutely unnecessary. And there was one other, other thing which is not the greatest design choice, this piece right here. I think that should be cut off. Why? Because it means that this first part of the edge right there, you can't resharpen it. Simply, if you try to get in there, with a stone or, or even something like a small ceramic rod, you can't get past that. It's in the way. So this part can never be resharpened pretty much. As far as the other side is concerned, you could probably use this as a glass breaker if you had to, which is kind of neat. The safety here moves pretty easily. If you uh, put it on, it doesn't open. And once opened, if you put it on, you can't close it either. The liner does still move, but it's locked there. So that might actually give it some extra strength when using. So it might be a good idea to put the safety on whenever you have it open and, and want to work with it. Similar to my criticism of the liner, the uh, belt clip is also kind of overkill. It's too stiff in my opinion, and it sits pretty high, so uh, there's not much of the knife protruding from your pocket, it's kind of difficult to get a hold of and pull out, uh, especially since the belt clip holds on so tightly. So it's a bit of an inconvenience to struggle pulling it out of the pocket, uh, which is ironic because it opens so quickly, so that's a bit odd. As far as the overall build quality is concerned, I'm pretty impressed actually. It's very sturdy. I did some abusive testing, uh, things that you simply should not do with a folding knife like this, but it held up quite well.
After I whacked it against the wood, the uh, liner had moved over a bit, so it was hard to actually close it again. But after I pried that to the side, now it, it works just fine. The lockup is really solid. It's after the abusive testing, there is a tiny, tiny bit of, of play in, in this direction, which there wasn't before. But back and forth, absolutely nothing. And uh, it's, it's still very solid. The uh, rubbed off finish right there, that is from when I tried to stab a can with this, which, uh, you know, because of the tanto point, that works very well. And the point was not damaged from that. It was really just the finish. The finish seems to hold up well, too. You can see the scratches from the tests, but uh, other than <laughs> the screwed up sharpening job here, the uh, finish is still intact. Uh, aside from the can stabbing trace there. So overall there are a lot of things that I like about this knife. Uh, primarily the aesthetics, that's something that I find very pleasing. Uh, definitely a good collector's knife, but it would also be a good EDC work knife. Uh, it has a very practical functional blade shape. You basically get the advantages of uh, Warncliffe style, straight edge, and then you get the secondary point here, and you know, the Tanto point, which is really robust. The knife can be found for $38.26 at Amazon, which is kind of a medium price range. It's not cheap, not expensive and uh, definitely appropriate for the quality that you're getting, in my opinion. Even though I wish the, the steel had a higher carbon content at the price. But other than that, it's definitely a good purchase.